Hi, I'm Curtis Hansen. I'm the curator of the Freeman Herbarium at Auburn University's Museum of Natural History. And today I wanted to show you for a few minutes how I've been working from home processing lichen specimens. First of all, I want to show you all the tools that I use when processing lichens. First, we have a cardboard stiffener, which is a piece of cardboard that's used to glue the lichen onto or support the lichen because lichens are held upright in packets. I also have a lichen packet or bryophyte packet as sometimes they're called, which is the final place that the lichens are housed and kept. I'll have a, light, I'll have a label that's already been prepared ahead of time with the identification and location of the lichen. We have barcodes that will be added to the specimens for databasing later down the road. Um, we have also cotton padding that's used for some lichens as well. I've got scissors, a pen, we've got some glue that we will use. And last, certainly not least, the most important thing is we have the lichens. I collect lichens in the field in paper sacks. And they remain in paper sacks all the way through the processing of these lichens. You don't ever want to collect lichens in plastic bags because they need to dry out. If they're in plastic, you will promote uh, mold and fungus growth, so you don't want to ruin a specimen that way. Okay, so we will take our first specimen here, pull it out of the sack. Sometimes it's in little pieces, depending on the bark is broken up. But you can see on that piece of bark are little teeny bumps. That's a lichen called Porina. So I will save the biggest pieces out like this and we'll begin gluing. When I turn this over you'll see that I put glue right onto the bark. I don't actually want to glue the lichen specimen. So I'll just put glue along the edges where I know that it will come in contact with that cardboard. Just kind of give it a light press and that will glue. And then I'll glue the other pieces really quickly onto the cardboard. That is essentially done. Now I will glue the label. So I have the label ready. I just put a little bead of glue along the back top of the label. It doesn't take very much. Then I will glue it onto the outer flap of the lichen packet. Make sure that gets a good, good press down, good contact with the paper. I will add a barcode label to the packet as well, again for later when we enter this information into the database, like so. I will add one more thing, usually if I glue the specimen to the cardboard, it will be the collector and their number, so that in case this specimen ever gets out of this, separated from this folder, they can be put back together and you won't mix up specimens. So this is Hansen Collection 7237. And our first specimen is done. Okay, now I want to show you quickly how to process a specimen where you do not use glue. Again, you don't want to actually glue the specimen because that would be bad for it. So this is the genus Usnea, a fruticose lichen. And there's nowhere really to glue that down to the specimen. So what we will use is a little piece of this cotton wadding. We just cut a little piece off like so and it just lays underneath the specimen but again when this is held upright in an envelope in a packet it does not fall to the bottom and get crushed so this specimen is essentially ready to go and I'll set it over here to dry Here's a counter full of specimens that I have worked on. And here's a box that's completed where you can see each specimen is labeled, glued down, and kept within each packet. Some specimens don't fit well in a packet envelope, but they need to be put into small boxes because of their bulk or their size. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.